Look at that. That looks amazing. I'm Andre, and I guess this is pretty self-evident what do we got in front of us. This is the Durafly Night Tundra. Let me get this box out of the way. Uh, I've already peeked inside and I've been pulling things apart and looking and woo, I love the Tundra. I've had the original V1 uh, since 2016 and flew the snot out of it. It uh, Exceptional airplanes. So uh, I never got around to V2 because I never really had a reason to, but uh, the Night Tundra is based off the V2 with LEDs inside the cow, the fuselage, the wings, everything we'll just, which you'll see once I've assembled it. Assembly, this is gonna be a super fast bench look. Uh, basically what's in the box, uh, what you need to know about putting it together, what kind of you know power system it has and everything. And, and that's it because nothing has really changed outside of the addition of the, uh, uh, of the LED system, which uh, all up, adds about what 70 grams of weight to the entire aircraft so I, i'm just excited to have some fresh foam and a plane with lights in it which i think we'll see a lot of action this year uh, particularly into the evenings when the winds die down around here because it's been really blustery during the day so hey all right further ado let's let's hop into the box but here's the fuselage uh, i mean if you know what the Tundra is, you know what it is. Uh, inside this plane, you've got the 40 amp ESC with reversing, and now there's a, a JST connector going off to the lighting equipment. So myself, uh, I've actually ordered a module that'll let me turn the lights on and off uh, with an extra switch on the remote. It's like 10 bucks, so eh, aces. Uh, and then I really do like the color, the green, uh, the floor green is really nice and bright and pops compared to the older, darker green, so. There's the fuselage ESC and some of the wiring on the inside and all the mounting points, everything. Uh, in the box, it's pretty standard as if you've uh, opened up a Tundra before. You do get floats uh, and they were loaded inside the main compartment. And then check underneath, there's gonna be a piece of cardboard and under that is where the accessory pack goes, and that's got your uh, your wing struts, your landing gear assembly, uh, some bracing for the rear uh, elevator section, your prop, which is a 12 by 6. Fun fact, I've replaced the prop once on my old Tundra. Once, and that was because I chipped the end off it. It's actually sitting on the front of the bench as a, as a trophy piece. I hook myself on it occasionally. But I literally just chipped the end off it when we were doing a short takeoff and a landing thing. And just, you know, I would have flown. I flew with it, but it was really a balance. So, all right, what else is in the box? You get some, uh, all your wing fixings, your screws, you know, all your mounts, hardware, and everything for the, uh, the float system and uh, Tundra style wheels. They're not the squishy foam, they're the traditional hard foam, which I've never, ever, ever had a problem with. Uh, I land primarily in grass and gravel. This thing actually is always on grass. So I've never, uh, I've never had the smushy, softer V2 style wheels, which, yeah, who cares, right? Um, spar. Spar is just over 23 inches long. And what you'll notice, if that shows up on camera or not, probably not, um, I put a mark in the center. And the idea there is when you slide the uh, spar into the, uh, the wing section and everything, there is a little spot for when you're doing glider toes. Oh, not too far. Oh, the foam sound. Sorry, folks. Anyhow, when you line it up, I like putting a little, a little bit of silver on the spar so I can see that it's exactly centered through that little, where is it? Right there. So, and, and the other thing I do really like about the Tundra design, uh, top loading battery hatch. I mean, come on, common sense, right? So, spar. And then the wings. And, and you'll see everything as usual as per Durfly's uh, standards. Packed really nice, everything arrived nice and secure, no issues. Everything is wrapped in foam sheeting and everything. Here are the two rear tail sections and uh, they, I will glue mine in as per the other plane. I had those little stabilizers uh, or carbon fiber pieces 
and they go in really nice. It's got a good solid piece of plastic between the two of them to maximize the articulation and you know, synchronization on the elevator. So that's nice. Uh, and here we go, the wings. So the LEDs, you have top section LEDs, bottom section LEDs, and then blinking uh, red and green, depending on the side of the wing. Uh, so it is very noticeable, very visible from the, from the preview sneaks that I've seen. Uh, and all the wiring is gone right in through the centerpiece there. I'm trying not to get my face in there. There we go, look at that. Uh, yeah, so it's a nice convenient six pin plug, which covers off your two servos and all the LED power and everything. So that's nice. So it should make it very transportable. Uh, the wing screws are uh, brass fittings inside the wings. So if you do need to take them off, I rarely took mine off, but if you have to absolutely do it, now it's probably gonna be a little nicer. Just get a little container and contain those screws or put them right back in the wings afterwards. Again, nicely wrapped and protected. Love the barn door uh, on these, like the, the, you know, the full flaps and everything. And this airplane will fly great in a lot of windy conditions and everything. Uh, battery wise, it is a still going to be a traditional uh, 3S aircraft. And that is now mainly due because the LEDs. So if you want to run 4S or anything, if, you're, if you want to hop it up and everything and change out the ESC and so forth, um, Fording at BSC, by the way. Uh, you'll just have to change how you, you'll have to put in another power source to power or 12 volt back to take care of the LEDs because I think those are all just spec for 3S 12 volts. Uh, and I'm going to be either running a Zippy, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, my old A specs because they still work and it keeps it really light or the uh, the graphene. So uh, 3S 2200 battery up front and we'll cover off the CG. And of course, the other item in the manual is the very nice quick setup guide. Uh, literally, unless you've never experienced this airplane before, this is all you need. I've just copied over my remote settings from, from my previous aircraft and made a couple minor tweaks and changes. And uh, again, 1300 millimeter, 51 inch wingspan. Length is 920 millimeters or 36.25 inches. Uh, so the weight, like I said, is up. It's now 1,225 grams, so it's up about 70 grams with the LEDs. The plane will not care. Five to six channel uh, setup. Uh, you're going to want at least a six or seven channel re receiver in there, so you can do your reverse because the ESC does allow it. Motor is a 30, uh, 36, 36, 900 kV, 40 amp ESC brushless with reverse plus the uh, JST connector to power the uh, the light system. You've got six nine gram servos the Durafly 12 by 16 prop and suggests 3S battery. And your CG is anywhere from 50 to 60 millimeters from the leading edge. Uh, what else could you want? I mean, it's a high wing, comes with the floats and everything. And whew, so let's build this thing really quick. There are a bunch of little screws everywhere. So just keep an eye out for those. Uh, and here are your little uh, wing pieces. So and they just literally go on to the fuselage and the wing and uh, they screw in, glue in, whatever. I think I used foam tack last time, which you just have to let the, let the glue set up and then your gold and there's your little uh, tail piece for the, uh, you put the floats on. I've flown now once with the floats on this aircraft during the winter and really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun and uh, we'll totally do that again someday soon. These things are great. These magnetic pads, love them. Here, nice entrance spot. And just angle that in. Get some resistance. Flip that one over. And uh, there are screw points that align, and you just line everything up nice and neat. I've actually already got my receiver in there, and I'll show you all that in a second. And starting the uh, the rod into the foam, sometimes you have to uh, help it along. And then after that, it's just gently slide everything in without crushing anything. Okay. Squishy foam, squishy foams. I just need the screws for that. 
But as I was saying, I do have my receiver in there, just a seven channel, eight channel FR Sky. I'm gonna try and hide my face so the camera zooms. And it's just Velcroed in there. And I've got like one, two, three, four, and I think, uh, yeah, one through four of the regular channels. Reverse is on eight, and I think flaps are on six. And then when I do the uh, the lights, it'll be five or seven. No, uh, no real rhyme or reason. It's just how everything lined up. So you do get a selection of screws, and the first one we're going to look at is the uh, two by three by six, and that is for the elevator. Don't have to over tighten these at all. They're pressure fit and. All you have to do is drop the landing gear in to the spot and put in the two screws and that is a tail section. And so if you want to run the paddle, you take out this piece, you take out the tail, the tire and stick the paddle gear in and that gives you steering abilities while on the water. I've never flown a float plane off water to be honest. So that's something I'll have to try one day. These little stabilizers are, are, are just structural integrity pieces for the uh, the elevator section are really good. Uh, just don't be too aggressive when positioning them. Uh, the plastic in there can snap, but uh, basically you're looking for something like that. For this application, I'm going to use a little uh, foam safe CA, uh, foam tack will probably look really good, but this will set up really fast as well. I made an error on the first one, and then of course on the second one, I was too aggressive with the plastic. But uh, you'll notice, and this is no big deal, um, this one is folded under. That's what you want to do. Just be really careful with the plastic. Use a drill to get in there. Uh, the other one is up a little bit more. I'll put some some uh, uh, other glue in there just to prevent air from getting underneath, but no big deal. Next up, landing gear. We're moving right along on the night tundra. It will not take much longer to finish this aircraft off. So, wheels. Uh, then there's the caps in here that we're gonna want. You're going to want two uh, closing plates that sit on top. And I'm liking, actually, it looks like they've actually, they, this is probably from V2, uh, beefed up the landing gear section a little bit more. Those screws and everything, the screw mounting points look really nice and tidy. So that's nice to see as well. You've got the wing strut pieces coming off there. Landing gear time. So you get your two strut pieces, the rear one, which has got uh, a forward swept, as you can see. And then you have these two main landing gear pieces that hook in with the spring. So you want the little eyelet connectors and you want the spring loops facing inward. This will all make sense when you drop it in. And then these guys slide in together like this. That sits all nice and tidy, nice and tidy. Slide that guy in. go nice spin that around again perfect okay so now I'm gonna put the caps in place uh, and these are a little one-piece plastic unit that will lock the landing gear down and into the aircraft of course now I've seen all of my fingers now so I can't do anything so these two pieces I don't remember if they're identified and I think they are I think there's a left and a right but it's pretty obvious when you put it in too Okay, and this is your centerpiece, and that drops in before you put the caps on. And then you put the two springs, and then they tie into these guys. So you want to set your screw length and everything, your depths, and lock it all down, put your screws in, and ta da! 2.8.5s from the rest of this point on, there you're going to sink all three into the, to your main landing gear spot, and then you're going to use the remaining for your wings. Don't have to be reefing on these things. Just make sure they're all the screws. Just make sure they're seated nice and tight. 
and that gear will be coming out. So you want to set your depth to, I'd say, about a quarter of an inch. Uh, and then that should be good. Uh, the uh, little grub screw is just a 1.5. Woohoo, we're getting closer. Stretch. Oh, yeah. Okay. I love Tundra tires. I spare Tundra tires. Go figure. I'm a high wing guy. I'll always like my high wing planes. Here's my spot. Let's see if I can show you this time. You should see a little streak of silver. I'm going to do all the control surfaces after the fact, uh, once everything's on the aircraft, because my receiver is actually in the plane. So it'll just be me centering all my control surfaces and then hooking it in. So, wing number one. Come on. Slide on. Always the first time you slide a carbon shaft in, a little tension, and then you just align, a little wiggle, wiggle, and that went in really cleanly. A little push, nice. And pop, nice. Cleanly, just a little extra. I Wings, tubes, and, and that are probably the hardest part, just to make sure that you don't do any unnecessary damage. So it's just a little bit of pressure and wiggle it in really cleanly, slowly, just so you avoid crushing any foam. Um, it's nice that there are enough plastic pieces. There we go. You just grab those little tabs and you uh, help it in. I got the back one really nice, and that's the front one now. It just needs, there you go, nice little bit of pressure on the end. I like putting my hand there, broadens the whole push, and the wings are on. Which means, once I get these two screws sunk in, we're going to turn this thing on and actually see what it looks like. Even before I've set up any of the control surfaces, uh, or put the struts on or anything like that, just to see what the colors look like, because really, there's not a lot left to do. Are we ready for some colors and some lights? Oh, yeah. Okay, look at that. So, from the top, you've got some really nice green on your right wing, red on your left, the white front end of the cowl, and then the blue all lit up in the back of the aircraft. And then you'll see underneath, you've got the white indicators, your horizon line, your, your just your orientation lines on the wings and flashing red and green. Look at that. That looks amazing. Um, let's see if I can do something here in the studio. I'm gonna turn off the lights. That will do nicely. Uh, this summer into some good nighttime flying. Look at that. There is plenty of light coming out of this beast of an airplane. I like the back glowing blue and uh, the white. It's uh, it's nice that you'll get that um, the orientation at night when you're flying along. And it's a tundra, so it's going to slow down really good. All right, let me get the... Uh, well, there's the payoff shot, right? Let me get some lights back on in the studio. That's phenomenal, phenomenal. I'm really excited by this airplane. Again, uh, I'll finish the CG off and everything, and literally all you have left to do is put the control surfaces on, link them all up, build your floats if you want to. I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, I'm not even gonna put on the generators, the, uh, the Vortex generators. They came with the V2 and everything. I'm gonna leave the wing the way it is. So, not much left to do. So I'm gonna put the wing struts on, and I think what I realized is I need to pull two screws from the bottom. And that's what those are for. Because uh, the 2 by 8 screws, the rest of those, are all signed to the float system.
So, for me, for my radio, I've got my... Right. Pretty simple, huh? That's just how I fly. I don't know. I find it all, my fingers work better that way. Each person's different, right? So, so because the radio, the receiver's already in the back of the aircraft, that's why I'm not using a servo tester, which probably would have made it a tiny bit easier. But we'll do that. We'll start with the, uh, the ailerons. There's another one. That's clean. Ta-da! Woohoo! Let me turn this thing around now that uh, all the hard bending and ducking parts are gone so you can see just how it all looks. So, I'll probably go in and uh, tune the um, tune the flaps because the, uh, the barn door effect, they're almost completely inverted. So I'll probably go and put some limits in there, but uh, looks good. All right, next is the uh, elevator and rudder. With the elevator section and the rudder all hooked up, we now have full control. So I'm going to put the prop on, disconnect the battery, put the prop on, get the CG points, look at where the battery fits, and we are done with the night tundra. So the next time you see this airplane in its full glory, we'll be flying and hopefully flying at like dusk and dawn and all that stuff and having fun with these lights because this is the whole point of this wonderful airplane. The nut is a 10 millimeter nut, and I really like the fact that these 12 by 6 props have been carried over by all the generations of the Tundra. So I've only ever broken one, but yet I do have quite the uh, stock full of them if I ever need them. So that's really nice. All right, prop is on. It looks good. I've got the reverse thrust set already, uh, and we'll play with the prop and everything once I get the CG. Now, remember from the manual, the CG point is 50 to 60 millimeters from the leading edge. So I am going to measure that out. I've got some, uh, I'm running out of dots, but uh, I've got those. I think I'm going to go, I'll go right in the middle, I guess. Well, 55 millimeters, right in the middle of that. And uh, that should be more than enough. Anyhow, 55 millimeters from the leading edge is, it's just in front of that uh, tape line where the, uh, where the servo wires are. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go in line with the flaps and I'm going to mark it and there's like a, there's a foam detail there so I'm going to mark it with my, I'll just do a little divot, put my marker on, alright put on the rear piece, alright so 55 so control surfaces are all centered and Ta-da! I like that. And that has that battery. And I'll pull the cap off right away. Mm. That is with my A-Spec pack uh, right in front of the vent. Oh, you can see my finger wiggling around in there. And that's where I've always flown with this plane for as far as its CG goes. So that's pretty good news. Uh, you probably can move the batteries back and forth and, and move the CG around as you see fit. All right, there's only one thing left to do and that's to drop in a fresh pack and spin up and just see how nice and punchy that new motor uh, combination is on this thing. Uh, be mindful when you're flying and you've got your lights on to probably drop your timer down by maybe a minute, I'd say, because obviously there's, there's gonna be an ample amount of draw, power draw through the aircraft as you're flying around. So let's put a battery in there, run up that motor, check the reverse thrust and everything, and then that's it. Very cool. 
Remember to calibrate your ESC and everything too before you take off flying. Just make sure you have your maximum throttle and everything. Do that with the prop off if you feel like uh, sure you're all safe. But oh my goodness, uh, I'm. Um, it goes together like the classic Tundra, which is a lot of fun. Just watch all your fittings and everything. Uh, I went in actually off camera and I corrected some of the issues I was having with the the little holders in the back for the uh, the elevator setup. You do get a little. Uh, the classic uh, candy dropper thing. It does come with some floats, uh, which are all stickered up with that nice bright green. And obviously it's party trick are these wonderful, wonderful, wonderful LEDs. I look forward to getting out and going flying later on th this week at night and dusk and really showing off what this thing looks like at night with these beautiful colors. I'm Andre, Durfly Night Tundra. Thanks for watching this build. Stay tuned for the flight.